Talk us through how you ended up in the back lines this season. Was it something you or your, or your doc suggested, and is it permanent for you? Um, as I said last year as well, like it doesn't really matter where I play. Um, he has great knowledge of the game and, and knowing where he wants to place any player um, is actually kind of a good thing. It gives me the ability to be a utility and not have to focus on being a, a back line or a forward line. I can play anywhere on that field. So he not really a, a massive change, but I originally started in the back line. <laughs> Yeah, um, so silly question, but you or your doc suggested that suggested a doctor? Is that who the question is referring to? Oh, uh, yeah, as in the coach doc. Um, I think he's a vet, so <laughs> originally. No, sorry, that was just me reading really it. No, yeah, that's all right. Yeah, that's good for that. So, um, so at this stage, just to clarify the answer, it's something that he wanted to do for you? Yeah, yep. We'll just kind of go with it, and if that's what that's the position I play, then I'm happy to be on that field. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no development in that. Just kind of get on that field and play footy, I suppose, and not really have to worry about what position you play. So, how do you see your role in the team evolving? Oh, I'm, I suppose it's still a learning curve, and no matter what, um, playing footy or not playing footy, I suppose it's just a, a big thing for myself as a, a utility. But it allows me to be the person that like I want to be like as a leader as um, to help the young girls out and even myself uh, becoming a, a, be a better person and a better football player. Are you a member of the leadership team at the moment? No but I've been in the since the start of 2017 when I was drafted um, so I do see myself as a leader to help those young girls um, if they ever need any helping hand or whatnot just to push them to, to get better. So you think maybe your evolution over the course of the season might be um, learning more about helping young players? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's not about uh, helping young players here in Adelaide. It's helping young people that can see that there is a goal at the end of the tunnel and, and help push them to, to be the person that they want to be or the player they want to be. Yeah, great. Um, what's been the biggest learning to come out of the weekend's loss and how has the team reviewed it? Um, as a team, we we've obviously taken taken that loss to to heart a bit, but it's it's a learning curve, and you, you've got to keep working hard to be the the best team. And if you lose some, then we've got to take a lot of those learnings and and bring on to the next game next week. It was a big loss, wasn't it? Were you expecting that big a loss? To be honest with you, I didn't really take notice of the scoreboard. Um, yeah, it was a big loss by the numbers, but if you look at the uh, the numbers and the possessions and everything like everything balanced out. Freo were just a really good team to get us um, to get at the back, the ball at the back, and then kind of kick some goals on us. So you happy with how you played? Then? For myself, um, yes, but there's still a lot of learning, learning to go from that that game definitely. Uh, another trip on the road. Uh, your third and four weeks coming up. How are you all managing the travel? Well, we're, we're managing it quite fine, I think. Um, a lot of the girls just taking it step by step and seeing what, what it takes us, like obviously being in isolation for GWS and that we came together as a team and just went out there and flew and played and then come back. But I think I'm currently used to it, just coming from Darwin and being that fly and fly out player. Um, the girls are enjoying it and um, I suppose that's what we've got to keep pushing ourselves if we're going to be flying and flying out for most games. Yeah. Uh, not so difficult, it's just kind of like it's week by week um, and that's what we are really enjoying I suppose. It, you've, you obviously can't plan where you're going to go but at the same time it's the excitement on who are you going to play this week or where are you going to go. Yeah, um, so is it not, it's not stressful, you, don't, you or your players don't feel stressed about all these up in the air? Nah, we just come here, play footy and let everyone else worry about that side of things and Sorry, say that question again. Brisbane had a big win over the West Coast yesterday. How will you combat the Lions' open forward line for the regional forward line? 
Uh, I suppose our, our defence and our offence or defence has just, just got to work together and put our best foot forward and, and I know our team can definitely do that. Um, just, yeah, we've got to play our, play our role and play as best as we can. Yeah, they're obviously, um, they're a very strong uh, team this season, so is this a bit of a defining moment to figure out how the season goes to you? Um, not so really. I think it's going to be a, a great challenge. Um, whenever we do play Brisbane, it's a it's a, a battle for the for the win, I suppose. And I know that this week is definitely going to show that, especially from last week as well against Freo. Both games are going to be tough, and and that's what we're going to do. Um, what do you make of Chloe Shears? Yeah, amazing. That girl has got skill, everything that any player really wants. She's got the confidence to even come back out there and play. And, like, I love Chloe Shear. She, she's an amazing player, and it's great to have her back out on that field. How are you concussion Yeah, good. Um, obviously, they've still got that 12-day barrier um, that they still need, it, which is on Friday. Um, but... They're definitely working hard to, to get back into the team and, and com yeah, complete everything that they need to do to play. Yeah. To be honest with you, I can't comment on that one. I'm not too sure. Uh, that's obviously up to the medical team and, and obviously the other two girls that um, will have to pass some tests. So the last question, can you predict at all what might happen in the coming weeks? I'll just read the questions. You have Brisbane, Gold Coast, and still play from the non-Victorian clubs. To be honest with you, I'm not too sure. Um, as I've said before, like it's just a week by week kind of game, and and if COVID's not going to stop us not playing, so that's a that's a great thing that AFL have been able to um, allow that for us to happen, and we just got to play ear by ear and see what happens. So how does the AFL do that? It rejects the schedule, um, so that you can so yeah, I suppose that we, we obviously got our game on Sunday after we played Freo to allow us to say, oh, all right, we're going to play Brisbane and then not, maybe next week we'll play Gold Coast, but who knows what will happen with COVID. Um, anything can happen with that. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, are you looking forward to facing the Victorian team? Any thoughts on that? Yeah, it's a, definitely. It's always a good challenge to play Victorian teams. I suppose it's a challenge or an excitement to play any team that you're not too sure what's happening or how they're playing. Like you obviously can see them on the game, but it's it's a lot more better contest when you're out on that field with them. And is it tough for your coach to come up with a solid strategy when he doesn't even know who's going to be playing the next week? Is that a challenge? Nah, not at all. I don't think so. Um, I back Doc, uh, Matthew Clark, as, mu as much as any other player that um, he sees that fits that role.